Hey everyone, my name is Rue and we're here. This is going to be week number three of the AP Academy. We're going up against Gray and his Vancouver Titans. Now, this is a really interesting matchup. And uh, and uh, I should say that this match was originally played on Showdown. He has a switch that cannot connect to LAN. So uh, we basically, I, were, I, I basically recreated this matchup against myself. Um, I played between my switches and um, I just gen in his team. I gen in mine and we're basically, uh, I'm basically bad on myself, but this was a very very long match right i'm gonna try to speed it up by 1.5 times the video at least but um this was 49 turns on showdown and this match would have certainly gone a timer had we been playing on the switch but uh it was a very good match it was a very solid match um it like i said it is a very long one it does go 49 turns but thankfully obviously we didn't go to timer or anything and uh we were just able to play out the, the entire thing on showdown i'm just gonna get right into the match because um like i said this was going to be a very long matchup no matter what happened because we both had really solid answers to or, or at least checks to whatever we wanted to do and we had a decent amount of um pivoting options and and um and just a lot of checks to what whatever we wanted to do so as long as we each played this matchup well moderately well then this was going to be a very long match from the beginning right and he leads off with his um annoyburn i lead off with my intellion and obviously this is not a matchup that i want to be in so i go out into my own rotom and he goes out into his own rotom now here i'm trying to think about what i can do ultimately i go for the for volt switch and um he goes for, he ends up going for his own Volt Switch. Now, I Volt Switch first, right? And that told me a lot in that moment because I do have a little bit of speed invested into this rhythm. Um, I believe just to hit some sort of benchmark. I don't entirely re recall what, but uh, I do have a little bit of speed into my own rhythm. So, this is already starting to get my gears turning about um, this potentially being like a, just a max defensive rhythm or a max special defensive rhythm. And it starts to get me thinking how um how this rotom is built and how his like overall team comp is is going to look and how i can try to manage uh, his team but he does go straight out into the noivern which is obviously really scary and i really obviously don't want to stay in here but um i end up going back into my rotom because i believe this is a really specially defensive rotom with again um a decent amount of speed for something that i don't quite recall but um he ends up uh, I go for the roost in, for the recreation, but he ultimately ends up going for a hurricane and misses it in the showdown version. So that was just me trying to play for for the recreation. And here, I honestly thought he was going to try to switch out and try to catch me on on something here, uh, which is why I end up going for, for the Will-O-Lisp. If anything, I could. Um, I guess what 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 I was thinking was that he would want to go in, in a max drill to catch. Uh, me volt switching or something to that effect, but he does not. Especially if it's if it's a mold breaker or um, executor, then I think he knows that uh, I don't match up well against it, right? So uh, here, this was honestly me just uh, clicking buttons a bit. I I completely ac accidentally um, clicked uh, clicked the same moves as as last one on one of them, and it, it doesn't end up aff affecting anything. But this was just like a, a burn turn where where nothing happens now going back to it he goes for a, another boom burst and i just try to get the heck out of there with a, with a volt switch i think that i can go into my silvali here and i am a scarf silvali uh which matches up decently well against this team i was really uh excited when i came up with this um scarf silvali because it does have a very very interesting matchup here now i don't know if he's expect expecting me to be um scarfed but he could also just be fearing a straight up ice beam uh on a bulky silvali with like leftovers or something so i just go for a pretty strong multi-attack right so um i i still do not know anything about this roto but it, it at least makes me think that uh it's going to be manageable for me in in the uh way that this match goes but it is rocky helmet so it does start to make me think that it is max defensive but even if it is right i just did so much damage to it so I'm already starting to think about um, Silvali trying, how Silvali can potentially get to get to where I needed to be for the for the end of this matchup, right? But um, I end up trying to get a little bit of a better matchup by going into Rotom here against this uh, Selby switching, and I see how little damage it does. I should have probably done some some calcs in game uh, to try to figure out just how defensive this Selby is. But this Sel spoiler, the Selby is very very defensive, and. 
Uh, it has a very, very interesting set. I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything yet, but uh, it does have some tricks of its sleeve that I uh, did not expect. And were very, very, very interesting, but that's not until very, very late in the matchup. Uh, so... I end up going into my Intellion, and he ends up going into his Aromatisse, and this is going to be a, a bit of a theme because in my head, I'm thinking that even though that that Celebi is really physically defensive, I'm thinking that I can get a U-turn and try to make some things happen with my Intellion and try to set up some other things later on in the match. Now, this was a very unfortunate thing for the sake of the recreation. Um, I do get a burn in the recreation that I didn't, that I never get um, in the match itself. So it's just a little bit awkward because uh, I'm going to have to play around it a little bit. Um, you, I do have to figure out some ways to try to make the HP work and all that stuff. But it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. He ends up going into the Rotom, which was really a, a perfect switch hit because it either took the water move or it uh, forced me to take some Rocky Helmet Chip by clicking U-Turn. So there really was no drawback for him going uh, for into that Rotom. And uh, it allows me to go in, into Appleton. So yeah, he went for the Wish uh, 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 just a turn ago. And... In my head, I'm trying to, I, I, was, I was trying to figure out how, how we'd want to play this. If we'd want to wish, if we try to wish pass or try to uh, wish protect and try to um, make something happen with his aromatis, maybe especially if he's a calm mind uh, set that tries to just like stay on the field forever and one v six my entire team. Which I've run ar aromatis like that, and I know how scary aromatis can be if it's just allowed to sit there and set up uh, indefinitely. But um. Regardless, I, I do go out, out of my Appleton, and uh, instead of attacking the obvious road in front of me, I just go for the lead seed, because ultimately, I think it's going to be a huge game of momentum moving forward. I'm, tr I'm going to try to make things happen, at the very least, chip things down. That's kind of my game plan, just trying to chip things down, so that um, I I can get a solid matchup here for my Sovali, because my Sovali really is how I get, I'm going to get most of my damage here, right? And um, everything else is kind of just trying to support my Sovali and my Italian as well. Those two are really going to be where my main damage is coming from. So, here, I expect this LB to, to, to want to switch out here. Um, and I end up going into my Italian, which uh, puts me in a really interesting spot here because, again, I don't want to be caught up against this thing just calm mining up forever. I really don't know how this Sovali is, is going to be trained yet. So I can't really mess around in front of the Sovali too, too much, right? Um, so I, I end up just going for the U-turn and trying to go into Mudsdale because again, um, in my head, my, the the prevailing thought is that it can be Wish Protect, Calm Mind, Moonblast, right? It still kind of beats most of my team, except for maybe, maybe the Garota, right? So... I'm thinking I can go into Mudsdale, and he would fear the Heavy Slam enough that he would want to switch out right now, especially when he has a really obvious, or, 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 or a really um, a solid switch into Rotom. So, I, I feel like this is a moment to just get a Brox, and again, try to make things happen with um, my team here. And it's, a, and it's at least going to help me, if I'm playing this momentum game for most of the matchup, it's at least going to help me get some shift damage off, and again, try to orchestrate some sort of an end game that's going to be favorable for me, right? So... I can uh, bring up my Appleton just to kind of, you know, deal with this, uh, deal with this Celebi. And he ends up revealing the Toxic, right? So, uh, this was, again, this was not a moment, this was not something that I thought of in the moment, but I should have been thinking more about why he would just, like, Toxic in front of a, in front of a Mudsdale instead of just going for a strong G Giga Drain that still does damage to whatever wants to come in. But, uh, fun fact, this Selby did not have a grass move on its set. Uh, again, it's a very, very fun set that does get revealed pretty late on in the match, but, um, it's not the time for that now. Regardless, he goes straight into the Aromatisse, and I'm trying to take that as, a, as an opportunity to get into my Italian because, um, I'm, I'm just trying to maneuver this thing. Um, I know the Selby's not going to want to see it in that moment, just to potentially get toxic, potentially anything could happen in that moment, right? So, um, it, I know it's, it's not going to get, it's not going to want to get worn down is what I'm trying to say, but, um, I am able to get in, in my Italian and I fire off a Scald and, uh, like I said, I'm just trying to make things happen, try to chip things down, but I'm going to have to start picking up some KOs eventually because, uh, it's not that bad in this. It doesn't. It doesn't seem that bad in this recreation. But in the original matchup, 
uh, we were going a very, very long time, amount of time without any KOs. Now here, I, I kind of expected him to want to protect, especially been, since I've been clicking U-turn over and over again. So I thought this was going to be an opportunity to want to get in my, my Garboder. So here I can start to um, at least threaten a, a, some damage here, th threaten a gunk shot, and take out the Soromatees. It, it, it felt to me like that aromatisse would be kind of the first domino that if it goes down a lot a, a lot of other things would would go down as well but i do get the spike up and and honestly when i got that spike up i was feeling pretty confident that um that i could wear his team down over time and this was a very specific arbiter that i built for the for spe specifically this interaction right i can um take a an earthquake with chuckaberry i can pop weak armor to outspeed him on the following turn and and I put an, a, a tiny bit of, um, of attack investment just to make some more favorable rolls to kind of 2 KO. And it was funny because in, in, in the matchup, in the original matchup, I was doing exactly the right amount of um, Dream Punch damage that I needed to 2 KO after rocks. So that made me proud. But uh, here's where he reveals that he is Scarfed. And he is 100% Scarfed. The only way that he was able to sp outspeed a plus 2 Garbodor uh, with my specific amount of speed was... Um, if he was scarfed, right? And it was super unfortunate, but uh, I ended up bringing my Rotom because for whatever reason, in my head, I was thinking, oh, this thing is scarfed in an earthquake. That, that, that allows me to bring in my Rotom and try to make something happen, right? Uh, and I don't know. In I I guess just I completely missed the the mold breaker text or I wasn't paying attention or whatever the case happened, but I was so locked into this thing being a sandwich ex exedrill um, in team building that for whatever reason like in in the actual match I just didn't even consider mold breaker and I ended up giving up my 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 Rotom for absolutely nothing right and 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 you can see I could have just brought an Appleton and scared out the exedrill, but. For whatever reason, like I said, it, I just completely uh, shut down in that moment, and I, I probably just missed the Moldbreaker text and thought that this thing was Sand Rush, even though it had no reason to be. Like obviously, Moldbreaker um, was better given that he didn't have any other Sand Setters on his team. Regardless, um, oh, these are just a, a handful of turns that I um, try to orchestrate to make it match the recreation a little bit closer, because uh, in the actual match. Uh, all, all he does is just is just a uh, br bring an aromatis, moon blast me, KO me straight off the bat. But um, he also had a lot more HP than than he did. Like maybe I'm messing up the 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 recreation, but for for whatever reason he had significantly more HP in the actual matchup than he did in, in, in the recreation. So I, so I just give him a, a free wish protect just to try to again or orchestrate. Um, what happened in, in the original match uh, actually what happened in the, in the original match was i brought in appleton on the exit drill i go for leech seed and i missed the leech seed on the on the aroma tease sorry so i was just trying to um make it match the uh, match up with the actual matchup more but um what ends up happening is i try to switch in my, my intelligence thinking that i can catch him on on a wish protect cycle and he just ends up he just straight up clicks moon blast and it I switched into a moon blast, which stunk because um, I had no other opportunity to kind of maybe get two scalds into this aromatis and maybe try to KO with with any type of favorable rolls because um, now I can't take two moon blasts anymore. And if I switch into another moon blast, like Intellion's done and a lot of my uh, damage output is done. So I go back in Appleton uh, trying to not take a whole lot of damage from the from the showroom but in truth i definitely expected this thing to just want to click vault switch and get a better matchup here um which is actually why i end up pulling a double switch um this is not a, a matchup that i want obviously because he has so many options where my leash sheet is it is, isn't going to do anything my my apple acid it, it isn't going to do anything and it's just going to be a matter of trying to figure out how, how I want to play this. But he does bring in the Garboder, right? And this is going to be a really interesting moment. Because I'm not scarfed into any attacks. And he's going to be able to G-Max. And, and thankfully, I was able to take a huge, huge chunk off it just on entry hazards alone. But it is going to be... It, it is going to allow me to get off a reasonably free scarf parting shot. And try to um, maneuver myself around, like, like, like I'm saying... And thankfully, like I said, I can just get the heck out of here, uh, try to see whatever I can do. And this is honestly the, the exact type of scenario 
that I drafted Mudsdale for. Uh, in, in a G-Max format, I needed a straight-up G-Max killer that can uh, take hits repeatedly and not just lose to, to Max Knuckle spam over and over again. So I take a Max Knuckle. I don't take a whole lot of damage. Uh, I get a stamina boost. So not only does the Max Knuckle um, only get him back to neutral because of the because of the parting shot drops but it gives me an, an extra stage of defense so i'm able to kind of take on this uh garbador as, as long as i stay in here and he makes a really solid play and goes for the max overgrowth it's gonna weaken my earthquakes um but honestly it, it didn't even really matter because earthquake was the best move that i had to hit it with regardless it, it is still stab even if it is going to be um neutral again because of the max overgrowth resistance um but yeah i i really don't have any reason to not just spam earthquake especially when he's doing not great damage to me and and i'm and i'm able to keep pace with this garboder because my stamina boosts are just racking up here and not only uh are, are my stamina boosts um kind of uh, allowing me to, to to be able to stall out this dynamax fr from this garboder but the fact that he set up grassy terrain is giving me uh hp back with uh with that terrain recovery so like I said, this is the exact situation that I needed Mudsdale, that I drafted Mudsdale for, and um, it's doing what it needs to do. I believe this is the last turn of uh, Gigantamax, so from here, I'm very, very free to just fire off another Earthquake, but um, I did kind of feel that um, just to just kind of cover myself in case of any types of switches, um, he, he does go for the seed bomb, but it just does no damage. Even in even with the grassy terrain boost, it just does no damage because of my stamina boost. And uh, just in case he, he wanted to bring in anything else, I did just go go for the rock slide. I felt like it was um, the safest just to get some baby chip onto the Rotom because who knows? It it, it could have mattered, but um, he he had also dropped his defense so low because of weak armor that. It didn't particularly matter what, what, what it went for on that turn anyway. But he does go in, into the Rotom. And I believe I want to save this thing, potentially, or or just sack this. Um, maybe, you, you know, uh, it would make sense if I just sack this thing. Or no, I don't. I go straight into, into Appleton here. But uh, at this point, I can go in, 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 into Appleton. But he saw that a mile away he just goes for the for the volt switch i wish i'd stayed in just to try to uh, make something happen but 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 even then mudsdale wasn't doing a whole lot of damage to anything else and poison was gonna rack up eventually obvi obviously um but here's the moment that i'd uh confused myself with a, a, a little bit earlier he's able to free very freely go into aromatease and uh in the original match he just clicks moon blast he just KOs me but for whatever reason i don't know what i'm doing wrong in, in this recreation um for whatever reason in the recreation uh my appleton has more hp than than, it, than it's supposed to have and this aromatisse has less hp than it's supposed to have so i believe I might just take a, a, a couple of turns just wish protecting just to make the HP stats match up with um, how they were in the original matchup. But again, this Romatisse is, is faster than me. It can just Moonblast me and I was well in range. I believe I might have come in on 60%. Again, I, I don't know why I had so much more HP uh, here, but it doesn't particularly matter. Um, I wasn't in the best spot, right? Because I'm losing... I'm slowly losing answers to the aromatease and as much as i really wanted to hit this aromatease with with physical attacks like the heavy slam likes likes silvali it's looking like it's really especially defensive and it's looking like it's really uh just just naturally bulky and it's gonna be really difficult for, for me for me to break i'm trying to think of ways in my head that, that i can break this thing but it just has a lot of hp and it can wish around and he he's been he's been playing me really well with how he um decides when he wants to wish protect and when he decides that he wants to um wish pass into something else especially because uh that wish pass in, 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 into the rotom was so huge because that rotom was on the field for so much longer than it needed to be or and it, it still is it's on the field for so much longer than it needs to be but here's where i try to take an opportunity I, once i let appleton go down because appleton uh going down allows me to bring in the muzzle it allows me to get off a, a heavy slam and here's the moment where i think he he was scouting me out now i don't know 100 he, he could have just been been getting off in an extra round of leftovers recovery 
and he knew he, he could smell my heavy slam a, a, a mile away and obviously it doesn't even matter in the recreation because of the um because of the burn chip but uh i think he was scouting out for whatever i wanted to do in case i would uh just go for for a raw earthquake just trying to get damage on this thing but i really thought that this was my moment to, to get off big big damage with a heavy slam as he tries to go for a wish i, I honestly thought that i was going to be able to catch him going for a wish and and like i said e e either passing it or wish protecting and i thought it would be a very very free turn for me to just uh heavy slam and finally finally take out this aromatease i was i was looking forward to be able to finally take out this aromatease but no um with that with that protect um scout he, he goes out in, in another room obviously i i kind of felt that switch coming so i did go for the rock slide just to get more damage off and not make contact so i don't have to um take take um take rocket helmet chip as well and here he, he in the original matchup he did land his hydro pump but in the recreation i just clicked stealth rocks just in case he he missed hydro pump and, I, and he ended up missing hydro pump in, in the recreation so Thankfully, that worked out, and there's no unnecessary damage that had to be spread around. But, uh, yeah, I just get taken out. There was really no reason for me to want to keep around my Mudzell. My Mudzell has bad matchups against most other things. And, but uh, it does all, it, it does allow me to take out this uh, Rotom finally, finally, finally with my Silvali. Even at the expense of some Rocky Helmet chip damage. Um, and it's funny because I'm starting to look at this matchup here. And... So Volley's pretty darn close to bringing it home for me, right? Especially with this chip damage. Um, I remember very, very specifically, uh, on the showdown version, I saw 34%, and I was trying to figure out what kind of a what kind of a role I had here. And it was a role that was pretty heavily in my favor, but thankfully the role also comes through for me in in the recreation. But uh I felt kind of apprehensive about clicking multi tag, but it was really the only move that I had available to me. And he was telling me that he had his own kind of mold breaker moment where he thought that I had switched moves early on in the matchup. So he thought that he outsped me, but uh, he didn't realize that I was scarfed. But obviously, I, I was scarfed, uh, scarfed enough to outspeed a, a scarfed exit girl. And I pick up the KO. I thought that was huge. Uh, he goes into the the celebi and he goes for the reflect right so this is what i mean earlier when i said that this thing doesn't have a grass move right so this thing has just revealed earth power or no maybe it hasn't even revealed earth, revealed earth power yet but um has revealed re reflect and recover which is really problematic for the rest of my team or i say for, for the rest of my team for the two mons that are left but even in this moment right i felt like i, I can catch it on on a protect turn right or, or on a recover turn and I can get a U-turn off, and even through Reflect, I felt like U-turn was still, like, quad super effective. I was, I was thinking in my head, right, I can still s sort of make something happen. I, I, I could at the very least do enough with with that U-turn damage that I can uh, start to make something happen with my Silvali, right? So, here I am in with my Silvali, and I and I do basically no damage with, with U-turn, and it really starts to make me worried here right so i i tried a parting shot out in my italian thinking that maybe it would allow my italian to take a hit and and uh obviously at at, at this point I'm, I'm starting to realize that ice beam would have been overwhelmingly better not only because uh i i i think i was like modest in italian um so u-turn wasn't even doing a whole lot of damage but then but then you turn through reflect I, I i start to realize far too late that that ice beam would have done a lot of a lot of damage granted i don't think it was enough damage where it would have allowed my sovali to come in and ko with multi-attack through reflect but uh it at least is not great that i didn't realize that ice beam would have been obviously the better play and honestly i had air slash on the set what i really should have gone for if i was really feeling it was go for a couple of of, of air slash flinches and then in, into ice beam I could have 1v1'd the, the Celebi if I'd just gone for the Air Slash right there and gotten lucky with maybe like two to three flinches, probably. But maybe that was kind of a somewhat of a, of a path to victory, but it would have been really difficult to, to get there in, in the end no matter what happened. Um, but regardless, I guess that's good. That's going to be week three. It was a really, really fun match. Like I said, um, being in this kind of Sword and Shield 
the Switch meta is really interesting because a lot of the games are so fast paced. You know, you have to play fast because because of the timer. But uh, but I think I I think a lot of people now are just like in this headspace of playing faster and uh, having to play this on showdown. I think slowed both of us down significantly and forced us to kind of play in a way that uh, the Sword and Shield Switch meta just doesn't really reward right now. So. It's been a while since I played a 40 turn, a 49 turn match, and uh, like I said, it definitely would not have been completed on on a uh, switch. And I think he would have absolutely destroyed me on on timer because um, I would have just had to have play, played faster. Like maybe I could have dialed in my 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 moves faster. Maybe I would have beaten him on timer, but it wouldn't have felt great because he had he had a strong mon advantage on me for the entirety of the game. So. Uh, it would not have felt great to, to have won that way, but um, who knows? Who, who knows what would have happened? But uh, like I said, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the AP Academy, as well as uh, the UBL playoffs are going to be starting up really, really soon. I believe there's going to be a week delay, but uh, like I said, it will be coming up really, really soon. And more weeks to the NCP Nimbus Wi-Fi Division. Uh, that's been a lot of fun with the team that we took over. But with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to go once again out.